This article lists British armoured fighting vehicle production during the Second World War. The United Kingdom produced 27,528 tanks and self-propelled guns from 1939 to May 1945, as well as 26,191 armoured cars and 69,071 armoured personnel carriers mostly the universal carrier. Topic. Tank design and production British tank design focused on pre-war requirements for light, cruiser, and infantry tanks created experimentally by JFC. Fuller, PCS. Hobart and B.H. Little Heart. Their experiments and doctrine led the way in the development of armoured warfare after the First World War, and also had a major influence on Axis development under Heinz Guderian until the outbreak of hostilities. Requirements were raised by Lieutenant General Sir Gifford Le Cain Martel. These types were joined later in the war by requirement for a heavier assault tank, and eventually the Universal Tank expected to replace the cruiser and infantry tanks. Neither entered production. Light tanks had mostly been discounted by the start of the war in all roles except airborne generally replaced with the carrier. As a result, the majority of British wartime tank production focused on the cruiser and infantry types. <laughs> <laughs> roles and responsibilities Prior to 1936, tank design and production came under the responsibility of the Master General of the Ordnance, who appointed a Director of Mechanization. The Director of Mechanization led the Mechanization Board who represented the various user arms combined to lead the production of tanks and vehicles. Before the war, the Master General of the Ordnance Post and its holder General Hugh Ells had been replaced by Hor Belisha, the War Minister, and Director General of Munitions Production. In 1939 this post was now part of the new Ministry of Supply. As works within the Ministry of Supply scaled up, a new Director General of Tanks and Transport, Peter Bennett, took on the capability of design leadership, and in 1940 added a Controller of Mechanization Major General A. E. Davidson to supervise the Mechanization Board, working as before. In May 1940 the War Cabinet had been established, and formed the Tank Board to investigate and resolve tank design and production problems. The Director General of Tanks and Transport was replaced now Jeffrey Burton and now led a Director of Armoured Fighting Vehicles representing the War Office, and separate Director of Design AAM. Durant and Director of Production. Under Durant's new Directorate of Tank Design a new Department of Tank Design DTD was formed to design the tanks. The DTD was formed rapidly from available technicians, in many cases lacking experience and lacking in production facilities, while a large number of projects based on general staff requirements were underway. As such, tank design was increasingly reliant on industry experience and capabilities within Vickers, Vauxhall, Leyland, Nuffield, and later Rolls-Royce. In 1941 the tank board was further reorganized to include a director of artillery and representatives from the general staff, as 1941 progressed, with development of greater horsepower tank engines, greater stresses were placed on many of the tank components. Rolls-Royce, aided by Leyland and Vauxhall, started to become more involved in improving the design of a greater array of tank components, increasing performance and reliability. This saw the transition from work on an improved Crusader tank, the Cavalier tank, to development of the new Cromwell tank. Rolls-Royce created the Rolls-Royce Meteor, and set its pre-war car design team to work in improving tank design to enable its use. Later in 1941, the DTD was transferred to the Controller General of Research and Development within the Ministry of Supply. This marked a major change in the focus of the design team. At this stage the DTD began to take on a coordinating role. It produced specifications and commissioned pilot models for each tank to assess different companies. One competing company would then be appointed the design lead for further development of that tank. 
This followed a similar pattern to the RAF's Air Ministry specifications. In November 1941, W.A. Robotham, the chief engineer of Rolls Royce's chassis division, who had been the main proponent of the Cromwell and Meteor Works, was seconded into the Ministry of Supply to become the chief engineer of tank design. Robotham started a fresh look at tank design, starting with welded hulls and final delivery of the six-pounder gun, designed in 1938. The role was outside of the usual hierarchy, allowing Robotham to coordinate efforts between DTD and industry while adding some much needed technical advice to the tank board and general staff. In 1942, the chairman of the AFV division, Viscount Weir, was appointed as the chief executive for tank design and became the chairman of the tank board. The tank board was reorganized to provide equal representation from Ministry of Supply and the War Office, consisting of War Office Deputy Chief of the Imperial General Staff Lieutenant General Ronald Weeks Assistant Chief of the Imperial General Staff Major General Darrell Watson Director of Armored Fighting Vehicles Major General A. W. C. Richardson Director of Mechanical Engineering Marge General Eric Rowcroft Ministry of Supply Chief Executive for Tank Design and Chairman Viscount Weir Chairman of the Supply Council Sir William Roots Controller General of Research and Development Mr. Oliver Lucas, later as Director General of Fighting Vehicles Research and Development Chief Engineer of Tank Design Mr. W. A. Robotham Others USA Liaison Colonel G. A. Green, of W. Averell Harriman's staff. Following the fall of France, U.S. contribution to the war effort became crucial. In early 1942, a tank mission was established and sent to the USA to exchange information on AFV design, comprising Lucas, Robotham, George Usher, controller of tank production, Weeks, and Richardson. The greater manufacturing capacity in the USA resulted in U.S.-made tanks providing the bulk of forces, while U.S. designers, newer to the business of tank design, benefited from British experience. The tank board stayed in similar configuration for the rest of the war, although individuals filling the roles varied. As 1942 progressed, Viscount Weir was replaced by Commander Robert Micklem R.N. of Vickers as Chief Executive of Tank Design. Archie Boyd replaced George Usher as controller of tank production. Claude Gibb was appointed Director General of Armored Fighting Vehicles, although Lucas continued to work under him. In August 1943, Robotham stepped down as CETD, returning to Rolls Royce. In 1944 the Directorate of Tank Design returned to designing its own tanks, creating the Centurion tank ready for delivery in late 1945. Topic. Cruiser tanks At the start of the war, the cruiser MKIV was the current model of cruiser tank based on a second version of the A-13 specification. The Crusader and Covenanter were parallel designs for a cheaper cruiser tank than the A-16 design proposed to replace the cruiser Mark IV. Both designs were ordered in 1939 prior to the start of the war. The first tanks were delivered in 1940. Covenanter never achieved combat readiness, and was used for training in the UK. Crusader was used extensively in North Africa, but suffered from problems with reliability and insufficient numbers were able to be fielded, many returning to workshops for servicing. Works to replace the Crusader continued in Britain, but when its successors were delayed the Crusader was modified to take the six-pounder gun. In parallel, Britain started to look at U.S.-made tanks to meet the cruiser requirement, initially requesting the U.S. to build crusaders. This request was denied as the U.S. tank program was focused on producing their own tanks of similar class, the M2 medium. This fitted the same 37mm weapon as the M3 light tank Stuart, which was already in British service. British experience of the 37mm gun had been underwhelming, and the M2 medium was turned down. 
The next version, M3 Medium later known as Lee Grant, was already partway through design and had a turret too small for the larger 75mm gun. To meet British requirements, the design was modified to add a larger gun in a side sponson. British needs were then added to the M4 Medium Sherman requirements. Both tanks were produced in greater numbers, and Sherman gained the unofficial moniker, Heavy Cruiser. The tanks that received the names Cavalier, Centaur and Cromwell were all designed to meet the same requirement for a cruiser tank to replace the Crusader tank. Design work took place in 1941 and 1942, focused primarily on developments in engine and transmission technologies. The A-24 Cavalier and A-27L Centaur used the Nuffield Liberty engine while A-27M Cromwell used the more powerful Rolls-Royce Meteor. When U.S. tanks entered British use, the Cromwell and Centaur design requirement was changed to move from the 6-pounder to 75 mm for commonality of ammunition. This reduced the armor penetration. An uprated 75 mm high-velocity gun was designed to overcome the issue, but proved too large for the new tanks, placing a renewed focus on the 17-pounder. Cromwell was first used in action with the Normandy landings in June 1944. A-30 Challenger was created as a derivative of Cromwell to meet the needs for a 17-pounder armed cruiser tank, but production was cancelled when a modification to the Sherman, Sherman Firefly, proved easier to produce. This allowed tank production to re-focus on Cromwell and the new Comet design. A-34 Comet improved on Cromwell. It mounted a further upgrade to the high-velocity gun that previously couldn't be fitted to Cromwell, now made capable of firing 17-pounder projectiles. It replaced the need for Challenger. Specification and design of the A-41 Centurion began in 1943, also initially mounting the 17-pounder. It entered service just as the war came to an end. Topic. Infantry tanks At the start of the war, the Matilda I was the current infantry tank, while the Matilda II was in production based on the A-12 specification of 1936 and the A-12E1 prototype of 1938. This entered service early in 1940. It was replaced with the Valentine tank, based on cruiser designs and the Matilda I. This was a private venture and did not have a specification number. Design approval was granted just as war broke out in 1939. It was rushed into service to replace losses in the Dunkirk evacuations. Work on the Churchill infantry tank had begun before the war began, with specification A-20. This developed into the A-22 specification when France was lost, and frontline requirements changed. A-22 had rapid development, with design completed around one month after the specification was released. Tanks began rolling off the production line a year later. The rush design left a number of faults, and the vehicle was expected to be replaced with the T-14 heavy tank ordered from and designed in collaboration with the USA in 1942. Parallel development of the A-33 Excelsior was proposed following the Dieppe raid. Both were cancelled when faults with the Churchill were rectified, and the vehicle proved capable of meeting battlefield requirements. A-43 Black Prince was later developed from the Churchill, design commencing in 1943, to be armed with the 17-pounder. By the time it was ready for production early 1945, the Sherman Firefly and Comet had overcome the immediate need for 17-pounder armed tanks, while the new Centurion offered similar protection in a more agile cruiser tank configuration. Production was cancelled, and with Centurion and the universal tank concept now replacing the need for separate cruiser and infantry tanks, this marked the end of the infantry tank line. Topic. Tank nomenclature 
British tank designs and the tanks produced were identified by general staff specification, tank type, the mark either of type, or of specific model, a service name, and version. For example, the A27M specification for a cruiser tank entered service as Tank Cruiser Mark 8, the 8th cruiser designed to see service with the service name Cromwell and was produced in 8 variants, Cromwell I to 8. A related design but with a different engine, specification A27L was the Tank Cruiser Mark 8 Centaur. This means that vehicles may be referenced in part or whole by combination of those elements. Topic. Specification number General Staff Specification was a reference to the requirements developed by the Directorate of Tank Design EGA-13. These were specifications for which new tanks were to be designed. Not all specifications led to vehicles being put into production. More than one design could be drawn up to a single specification and hence more than one tank produced to the same specification. If the vehicle was privately developed it may not have a general staff number at all. A significant redesign could lead to the issue of a new specification number without a new mark, for instance the infantry tank Mark IV Churchill, originally built to specification A22 in 1940 underwent a redesign leading to a better armoured vehicle the Churchill 7. This improved design was first known as A22F then renumbered as A42. Type name and mark Secondly by a descriptive name, as with other equipment in the British Army, e.g. Tank, Infantry, Mark II. This reflected the type and model of tank, i.e. Tank, Infantry, Mark II. Is a different tank to Tank, Infantry, Mark III. The scheme was introduced during the First World War but not always applied to earlier designs. The descriptive name could also be modified by the inclusion of A denoting an armament change or asterisk denoting some other change. <laughs> <laughs> Service name Thirdly by a name for this model of tank, e.g. Crusader. This could have a number associated for the version of this model of tank, e.g. Crusader II is the second variant or mark to the Crusader I. Some tanks had already picked up names, either nicknames or from project names, but in June 1941 the Prime Minister Winston Churchill asked that all tanks be named. The number can be used for upgrades to the tank synonymous with a second mark designation, but can also be used for different capability packages, for instance the fitting of a different gun or engine. This isn't necessarily a refinement or improvement, it's simply adapted to a different need or manufacturing technique. They are all based on the same design of tank however, whereas the mark of tank is applied to evolutions of the tank design, specification. For example, Valentine and Churchill both mounted a series of different turrets, some of which were improvements, while others were different methods of manufacturing. Valentine was fitted with both petrol and diesel engines determined by availability and manufacturer. Cromwell and Churchill tanks mounted the 75mm gun and 95mm howitzer for different purposes. All were given different numbers to identify the different variants. Topic. Tank production by model Topic. Tank, Infantry, MKI, Matilda I A11. The Matilda I was a machine gun armed infantry support tank. It had been built down to a price and for quick delivery. Those not lost during the fighting of the Battle of France were abandoned at Dunkirk. The few left in the UK were retained for training only. Total production 1937-40 to 140. 
Topic tank, infantry, MK2, Matilda II A12. The Matilda II was produced by Vulcan Foundry, John Fowler and Co., Ruston and Hornsby, the London, Midland and Scottish Railway, Harland and Wolfe, and the North British Locomotive Company. As well as Marks I, II, III, IV and V of the Matilda, some were rebuilt with the Canal Defence Light Total Production 1937 to 2987. Topic. Tank, Infantry, MK3, Valentine Valentine was a private development by Vickers that was accepted by the War Office. It used the suspension of their pre-war A-10 heavy cruiser design with heavier armor. There were 11 marks of Valentine. Total production 1939 to 45 of Valentine MKs I, II, III, and IV, 8,275. Topic: <laughs> Tank, Infantry, MKIV, Churchill A22. Total production 1941-45 to 5768. Topic: Tank, Light, MKVI. Tank production: 1682 tanks between 1936 and 1940. Topic: Tank, Light, Mk7, Tetrarch A17. Total production, 177. Topic, Tank, Cruiser, Mki, A9. Total production, 125. Topic Tank Cruiser MK two A ten Total production nineteen thirty eight minus forty to one hundred and seventy five Topic Tank Cruiser MK three A thirteen Total production 1938-39 to 65. Topic: Tank, Cruiser, MKIV, A13 MK2. The initial production of the Mark IV was by adding extra armor to Mark III. Later production included the extra armor at the time of construction. On top of those converted from the MK3, 665 of the MK EVA with the Bessa rather than a Vickers machine gun were built. Topic: <laughs> Tank, Cruiser, MKV, Covenanter A13 MK3. The Covenanter was an unsuccessful design, a result of suffering from engine cooling problems. Total production, 1,700. No A-13 Mk-3 saw combat as all but one which was sent to North Africa were stationed in Great Britain during the war and used for training. <laughs> Topic. Tank, Cruiser, Mk Vi, Crusader A-15. The last production Crusaders were produced without turrets as they were to be converted to artillery tractors or self-propelled anti-aircraft guns. Total production 1940-43 of Crusader MKs I, II and III, 5,300. <laughs> Tank, Cruiser, Mk-7, Cavalier A24. Total production 1941-43 to 500. Topic: 
Tank, cruiser, MK-8, Centaur A27L. Total production 1942-43 to 950. Topic: Tank, cruiser, MK-8, Cromwell A27M. Cromwell was produced in several marks, I, III, II was a design that did not proceed to production, IV, IVW, VW, VI, VII, VIIW, VIII. Some of these were reworks of earlier Cromwells, some of reworked Centaurs. Total production 1943-44-3066 Tank, cruiser, MK-8, Challenger A30. Total production 1943-44-200. Topic: Tank, cruiser, Comet I A34. Total production 1944-45 to 1186. Topic: Tank, cruiser, Centurion I A41. Total production 1944-45 to 6. Topic: Carrier design and production. Two types of carrier were produced. Lloyd carriers were based on the mechanical components of a Fordson 7 volts truck married to an armored tracked body. Brennan Scout carriers were based on the Carden Lloyd tankette and experience of the Dragon artillery tractor, but still used commercially available truck components for ease of manufacture. Both types commenced design prior to the war. The Bren, Scout, and Cavalry carriers had the same chassis, but there were differences in superstructure and fitted for different roles. They were succeeded by an improved universal type capable of handling multiple roles and most production was of this universal carrier. As the war progressed the universal carriers became one of the most numerous armored vehicles on the battlefield, with some estimates stating as many as 200,000 produced. Lloyd carriers were solely built in Britain, while universal types were manufactured across the British Commonwealth, with a significant number coming from Canada. A version was also produced in the U.S., the T-16. Topic carrier production by model Lloyd Carrier Carrier, Tracked, Personnel Carrying, No. 1 MK. Iron 2 Carrier, Tracked, Personnel Carrying, No. 2 MK. Iron 2 Carrier, Tracked, Personnel Carrying, No. 2 AMK. Iron 2 Carrier, Tracked, Personnel Carrying, No. 3 MK. Iron 2 Carrier, Tracked, Starting and Charging, No. 1 MK. I Carrier, Tracked, Starting and Charging, No. 2 MK. I Carrier, Tracked, Starting and Charging, No. 2 AMK. I Carrier, Tracked, Starting and Charging, No. 3 MK. I Carrier, Tracked, Towing, No. 1 MK. Iron 2 Carrier, Tracked, Towing, No. 2 MK. Iron 2 Carrier, Tracked, Towing, No. 2 AMK. Iron 2 Carrier, Tracked, Towing, No. 3 MK. Iron 2 Carrier, Tracked, Towing, No. 1 ZMK. 2 Carrier, Tracked, Towing, No. 2 ZMK. 2 Carrier, Tracked, Towing, No. 2 AZMK. 2 Carrier, Tracked, Towing, No. 3 MK. I Universal Carrier and Predecessor Models Carrier, MMG No. 1 MK, I and 2 Carrier, MMG No. 2 MK, I and 2 Carrier, MMG No. 2 AMK, I and 2 Carrier MMG No. 3 MK, I and 2 Carrier, 3 inches mortar No. 1 MK, I and 2 Carrier, 3 inches mortar No. 2 MK, I and 2 Carrier, 3 inches mortar No. 2 AMK, I and 2 Carrier, 3 inches mortar No. 3 MK, I and 2 Carrier Carrier Universal No. 1 MK. 
I, 2 and 3, 113,000 produced Carrier Universal No. 2 MK, I, 2 and 3 Carrier Universal No. 2 AMK. I, 2 and 3 Carrier Universal No. 3 MK. I, 2 and 3 Carrier AOP No. 1 MK. 3 Carrier AOP No. 2 MK. 3 Carrier AOP No. 2 AMK. 3 Carrier AOP No. 3 MK. 3. Topic: Armored cars. Armored car design and production ran through two distinct development cycles. Early armored cars were built on the basis of armoring bodies to fit onto normal commercial car, light, and truck, heavy chassis. This involved some elements of compromise as the body had to fit an existing shape or size, while the weight shifted with heavy armor and weaponry. Immediately prior to the war, this changed with vehicles such as the Dingo designed from the start for armored use. Such vehicles provided better handling, along with removing many compromises in design caused by the inherited chassis. Scout Cars Daimler Dingo 6626 Humber Scout Car 4300 Light Reconnaissance Car Shumber Light Reconnaissance Car Morris Light Reconnaissance Car Armored Car CC Armored Car 629 Coventry Armored Car 220 Daimler Armored Car 2694 Guy Armored Car 101 Humber Armored Car 5400 Lanchester Armored Car Morris CS9 99 Standard Beaverette Topic: Self-propelled guns. The rapid maneuver warfare practiced in the North African campaign led to a requirement for a self-propelled artillery vehicle. This could relocate faster with the flow of battle compared with traditional field guns. The principle of portee, carrying anti-tank guns on the back of trucks, was limited to smaller calibers. The first armored vehicles were brought into action at the Battle of El Alamein and development continued throughout the war. As the war progressed, self-propelled artillery saw further development in an anti-armor role, with the Archer and Achilles mounting 17-pounder guns. This can be compared with the American tank destroyer concept, but in British and Commonwealth use remained with the Royal Artillery. Following the war this transferred to the Royal Armoured Corps and ultimately was replaced with tanks in the same role. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Service names. Ecclesiastical names were chosen for self-propelled artillery. The first was Bishop as its appearance was said to resemble a bishop's mitre. The U.S. produced 105 mm howitzer motor carriage M7 was given the service name, Priest, by the British, as part of the superstructure was said to resemble a priest's pulpit. The 1942 self-propelled gun armed with the QF-6 pounder was named, Deacon, and the QF-25 pounder on ram chassis called, Sexton. Vehicles in the anti-armor role were given names starting with, a Topic. Production by model Bishop 150 expedient conversions of Valentine tank chassis to use 25 PDR, as Ordnance QF 25 PDR on carrier Valentine 25 PDR MK1 25 PDR, SP, Tract, Sexton 1500 plus, built in Canada on a custom derivative of Canadian Ram and later Grizzly tank chassis using 25 PDR. Deacon 175, 6 PDR on armored AEC Matador wheeled truck chassis. Self-propelled 17 PDR, Valentine, MKI, Archer 655 conversions of Valentine tank chassis to use 17 PDR. 
17 PDRSP Achilles 1100 conversions of US produced M10 gun motor carriage to use 17 PDR in turret Avenger 250 development of the A30 Challenger tank to use 17 PDR in a self-propelled artillery role Topic See also Comparison of early World War II tanks French armoured fighting vehicle production during World War II German armoured fighting vehicle production during World War II Soviet armoured fighting vehicle production during World War II American armoured fighting vehicle production during World War II Notes <laughs> <laughs>